what, what does it mean to be a fighting tiger? My name is Marcus Williams, class of 2005, graduate from Ironton High School, and this is my story. So born and raised in Ironton, and as a kid, it was just, it was safe. Like, it just allowed you to be you, is the best way I could describe it. Like, I can remember as early as five, just roaming the neighborhood. There were kids out, there was always something to get into, and it was cool. I think now being older and appreciating what that type of environment can do for someone, it was, I'm really thankful to have been here. And just, you were raised by the community. I would come home, and if I was in mischief, my mom would know, say, hey, Miss Dot said that you and Aaron were up to such and such. So you knew there was just this collective raising everybody was invested in the development of the kids because there was just a sense of pride for the community and as a kid I didn't necessarily appreciate that but as you got older you're like man like these people really are invested in me I'm an extension of their family and that just I think as a kid I mean I know now as an adult like what that did for my soul and who I am was just super impactful when I tell people that I'm from Ironton. The only people that are familiar with Ironton, the first thing they'll talk about, oh, you guys got a good football program. Oh, you guys got a good football program. So that just tells you the magnitude of a high school sport for what it does for a town, a whole tri-state area. Like, it, it's significant. And I don't think anybody can do it justice by trying to talk about what it means, but it, it just, it pulls you into a way of being that is it's something special. When I tell people where I went to school, say the Ironton Fighting Tigers, and they, they laugh, they're like, oh, the Fighting Tigers. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's what we are because it represents just the essence of the people in this community. Like it's just, we have to work a little harder to get some of the same things that other people get. And, you know, some people may kind of scoff at that, that that's the reality of just being in this area is you have to fight for, to keep things, and you certainly have to fight to get new things. So just to be able to have that be the branding that we represent the community when we're going out there, I think, you know, other teams don't appreciate it till you know, the whistle blows and then they're like, oh, like that fighting actually means more than just, a, you know, an adjective describing this team. When people ask me about high school football memories, the one that stands out top of mind, my junior year home game against Willisburg. And this is, this is my year. The coaches have high expectations for how I'm going to contribute to the team. We're out there warming up, and I'm in a good headspace. I'm feeling good about the game, ready to roll. We are running through some of our offensive walkthrough, and it's my turn to go in at running back, and I tell my older cousin, I'm like, oh, go ahead, go in and run this play. I'm not thinking anything of it. It's just me kind of taking in the moment I'm there, but the coaches were watching that, and it got misinterpreted as old Marcus is getting some jitters. He, he's kind of... He must be worried. We got to we got to hype him up here. So we get in pregame. Coach Loops, legendary. He's in there. First game of the year, rivalry game. We know the stakes are high. He goes through his you know standard pregame stuff, gets us all riled up, and then he just openly he gets in to give this like parable. He's like, "You guys ever heard of the noon baller? It's a person that can go in at the gym at noon and doesn't miss a shot." He's like, then when the lights come on, he's like, they can't throw the ball in the damn ocean. And he just looks and he looks at me, he's like, Marcus. He's like, are you ready to play? Coach Bertram told me that you didn't even want to get in during the offensive walkthroughs and go through. And I just felt that it just pierced my soul. And in that moment, I thought, oh, you have no clue how ready I am to play this game. Too cool for the rules, baby, get off of me. 
Never need no push, I do it all for me Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be Too true for the flex, baby, don't cap to me Got it in the market where it ought to be Too true for the flex, baby, don't cap to me Drop 50, bring 150 right back to me Keep a couple real hitters, got them on call for me Money moving, got it in the market where it ought to be so, Following the end of my, my senior year Football, basketball, track, tennis, all those things I really, the hope was I was gonna get that football scholarship, Division One. You know, that's what everybody wants. That's the dream for us all, and it didn't happen. And I got some offers to some smaller schools, but it didn't feel right. So if I'm being completely honest, like I was, the emotions I was feeling, I was embarrassed, and I was really disappointed in the process, probably a little resentful towards some of the coaches and stuff, feeling like they didn't advocate for me or look out for me enough so at that point in time i would thought well football is done back then ohio state was still in quarter so the football season actually started before class was in session so there was like three home games i just remember i'm sitting there in c deck it's a beautiful night and i'm just watching this game ohio state's driving pass in hits off hamby's chest goes up it's in that moment i'm feeling all this energy and i just heard the most subtle it had to be God whatever it was was just like you need to be down there and I thought okay like that <laughs> that's a ridiculous thing but it, it never left me and so I call the the athletic department football office and I just ask I say hey I'm interested in walking on what is the process and, and this this moments like this where you realize like nothing happens by chance, everything happens for a reason. I, I talked to this lady and she tells me that the first step in the process is the next day. Like I literally call this lady, just happen chance, it's the next day you go in, it's like an informal kind of informational session. And then they say, okay, come back tomorrow and we have tryouts. I'm like, tomorrow? I'm thinking I get like a couple weeks here to get right. So I literally go back to the dorm I'm like, ask, I didn't have cleats. I didn't have like the basic things. So I get a buddy lets me borrow soccer cleats. I get some tennis shoes from another buddy. And they're just like, all right, let's go. So I go there and it's like your standard kind of like combine S type training environment. You're running forties, pro shuttles, three cones, but then they sprinkle in some mental toughness activities. Or I think it's not really conditioning. It's really like, we're going to do some things to see how mentally tough you are. We're gonna to try to break you and see. So thank God for that opportunity because prior to like my 40 time, I don't know what it was, but it wasn't good. You know, my short shot, I was slipping around, didn't have good footing. So it wasn't like I presented well from an attribute standpoint, but we get into this mental toughness thing and it was like, hold a 45 pound plate over your head and just hold it there for, you know, it's just some nonsense stuff, but I'm like, all right, like, I'm not going to let this down. I'm either going to pass out, it's going to drop, hit me in my head, or I'm just going to hold it. So in that moment, you see these guys that really look like, you know, athletic specimens, because there's probably 120 dudes there. And some of them were like legit dudes. And you're like, all right. And you just see them dropping out, wincing, whining around. And then you get there, and there I am, last man standing with this plate over my head. And I'm like, all right. I was one of the seven that made the team. So you're like, congratulations, you made the team. What are we gonna do? We're just gonna show up here at 5 a.m. in the morning every day and run your butts off. So that was the next two months of my life as a football player was just running around doing conditioning, but it was good because that's what I was good at. You know, I could compete with these guys. I was tough enough to hang in there and it just gave me the confidence 
that I could do this because I'm seeing them and like in those moments, you know, it says fatigue makes cowards of us all. Like I could sense their weakness in that even though they looked like they were specimens, you're like, okay, like, no, there's some vulnerabilities here. And the, the first time you talk about humble beginnings, my first time on the field at a high state in a true practice setting was the defensive back coach telling me to go to the 20 and hold this pad as the defensive backs are actually doing the drill are going to use me to break on the route. And I'm just like, hey, like this, this is a part of it. I'm here, I'm participating. Just take it for what it is. I never let it really get to me. But as practices go by and I'm not even getting a chance to get out on the field to show them. So at this point, I've been on the team for four months and to their not, they don't even know if I can play football. They've yet to see me do anything with the football in my hand or on the field. So I'm talking to my parents. I'm like, like, how's it going? I'm like, it's fine, but I've not did a thing. As a running back, no one to run scout team, now I'm getting the chance to go up against the number ones. The ones on defense, I'm the scout team, and that's when the competitiveness in me really came out. So, you know, you're, you're going toe to toe with some of the best in the nation, guys, NFL caliber, caliber, and you just, you realize like, there's all these little micro battles that are happening. You're like, hey, I won that. I won that. And yeah, like they may be dominating because they're demolishing our offensive line, but when you get a chance and it comes out and you get a chance to one-on-one -on -one and you can win those, like you just do that. And coaches, are they're sounding that, they notice that. So start out the process and, you know, the season ends on such a high for myself, you know, having from walk-on to, to starter and then sophomore year, junior year, everything just progresses as you think. You get involved in more special teams, you're playing in more games, you're, mop-up duty as running back, so you're actually contributing. I'm no longer on the uh, scout team. I'm working with the ones and twos as kind of the, the man to make sure you're, you're Johnny on the spot, you understand the game plan for it. So I really felt like I was one of the guys. Like I am an Ohio State football player. So going into my senior year, huge expectations. You know, I'm thinking like NFL, let's go. Like if I can do it at this level, why not? the next level and the come out in the spring game and run for like 175 yards and do my thing. So you're like, here we go. Like here's more evidence that you're fully capable of doing this and then get into the season, four games in, playing Illinois at home. It's a, it's a terrible day. It's just raining a lot. It's a warm day, but the rain is out there and it's just miserable conditions. Coming into what I thought was gonna be like this epic storybook ending of my collegiate career, ends with me just laying on the turf, warm water just pelting on me. And that was it. Like that's that chapter closes in the most anti-climatic way possible. So then you say, well, well, now where do you go from here? And it's no different. Like just how in high school it was a very anti-climatic finish to my high school career. You know, and I decided this is what I want to do. And I just followed, you know, my heart and went on and it led to something great. So I thought, okay, well let's do the same thing as a professional, let's take that same fighting spirit, what I like to call it, that walk on mentality of just, I'm gonna identify with the things I wanna do and I'm gonna just go for it. And I'm gonna embrace that process and just transform myself in that process. So now, you know, professionally that led to being a successful physical therapist in sports medicine where I was helping athletes recover from the same injuries that I had and I could empathize with them because I had been there and I know what it felt like psychologically to come back and to push yourself the way you did prior to the injury. And then that culminated into me taking on more responsibilities within our sports med department at a high state and working with the local high schools with sports performance and our athletic trainers. And now I'm in a position where I oversee the business operations for our Center for Integrative Health within family medicine. And we are just trying to transform the way everyone pursues peak performance and experiences health. And that just comes from that essence of just tapping in to that foundational spirit that this town puts in all of us. You don't even appreciate it now, but it's there. And if you take the time to slow down and cultivate that, it's gonna take you places you couldn't imagine. And now I help people start their businesses. I've started a few businesses of mine, just entrepreneurial endeavors and work, everything is flourishing and it all comes down to you say, well, Mark, I'm not consider myself to be great at anything. I just am 
good at determining what it is that I'm passionate about, what it is that I want, and then I commit to it. And I think that's what this town shows us. When you have something that's important to you and you commit to making sure it's good, it will flourish. And then look at, look at some of the programs that have had that type of commitment here. It's here, so I just want everyone to hear this and know your story is just waiting to be told. And it probably won't unfold the way you think it will, but more than likely it'll be better than what you thought.